This is the latest release of the high-altitude thriller Falling. Two girls climb a thousand meters of TV tower with their bare hands. The whole film is tense and exciting. The subject matter is new and fierce. There is a fear of heights. Please pay attention to the small partners. Fortunately, Hunter arrived in time to grab a side antenna in a crisis. Only then was Connor not dragged down the tower. She quickly pulled the rope up. Connor was hanging in midair floating back and forth. Then she sat on the tower, with her feet straddling the iron pipe, and began to pull the rope with all her might. The tense process makes people look straight at the cold sweat. Under Hunter's relentless efforts, Connor finally grabbed the last section of the ladder. Connor was glad to have survived, but looked down but instantly dumbfounded. By this time the tower ladder had all broken down and fallen. Only a bare cylinder remains, and now they have nowhere to go. Two people were ready to call for help, but found no cell phone signal. What's worse is that the tower is located in the desert. Few people usually pass through here. Both men felt a sense of despair. Just when they did not know what to do, Connor seems to have found something. It turns out there is a metal box on the tower. Inside was a flare gun and a telescope. And the two men finally saw hope. At that moment, Hunter found a deep cut in Connor's thigh. She quickly took off her jacket to help Connor bandage. Then they looked through binoculars and saw an RV in the distance, but there was no one outside. Under the scorching sun, their mouths became dry. The backpack with water also fell on the signal below. The two men realized they couldn't just sit there and wait for death. Hunter suddenly thought that if he put his cell phone in a lower position, he might get a signal. Then he edited a text message for help and slowly climbed down the tower. Then they grabbed the last section of the ladder with one hand and placed the phone as low as possible, hoped to receive a better signal, until at last his arm was too sore to hold. Hunter climbed back up the tower. As a result, the message could not be sent. When the two were once again in despair, they came up with a more direct solution. Hunter took off his shoes and put the phone inside. Then he filled the shoe with his clothes to prevent the phone from falling out. Dropping the phone 10,000 meters into the air, the shoe quickly fell to the ground. Although protective measures were taken, the phone was still broken to pieces so high up. The two men's plan failed again. Soon after they suddenly saw a passerby passing by. The two people rushed to call for help, but they were over 2,000 feet above the ground. Even if they shouted through the throat, they wouldn't be heard. To get their attention, Connor threw his shoes down, but the man who was only focused on answering the phone, did not notice that something had fallen. Undeterred, Connor hastily threw another shoe. This time the shoe landed on the iron frame. The loud sound finally caught the man's attention, seeing hope. The two men shouted excitedly. The man came to look around the shoe, found nothing unusual, then turned around and left the place. The two men had just renewed hope. Anxious Connor was about to fire a flare, but Hunter stopped him on the spot. Because she saw the man setting up a barbecue near the RV, they will definitely come out at night. So it will be more effective to wait until night to fire the flare. As night fell, the impatient Connor immediately fired the flare gun. The light caught the man's attention. Immediately after he found the two trapped in the tower, the two excited people thought they were about to be rescued, but what they did not expect was that the man not only did not save them but even robbed them and took their car. As it grew darker, the two girls spent the night in the tower in despair. At this point they have been trapped here for 24 hours. If they do and hydrate, it is hard to see the sun tomorrow. As a matter of urgency, they must get their bags back from the cell tower. The two men tried to hook the backpack up with a safety rope but had to give up due to the lack of length. In order to get the package as soon as possible, Hunter decided to climb down and try. He tied the rope to the antenna and slowly climbed down the rope. After stepping on the empty foot, he almost fell. Fortunately, Hunter caught the safety rope in time, so he did not fall off the tower. Then he used both feet across the iron pipe to keep climbing down. But when Hunter reached the signal tower, only to find that the length of the rope was no longer enough. After several unsuccessful attempts, Hunter quickly unlocked the safety buckle, then one hand held to the end of the rope, the other hand ready to take the backpack. However, even so, he could not reach the backpack. Looking at the supplies in hand, a frightened Hunter made a bold decision and was ready to jump. Hunter finally jumped on the signal tower. She looked carefully down and found that the ladders below had all fallen down as well. Now the only way out of here is to call for help. After a short rest Hunter was ready to return to the top of the tower, but at that moment she again encountered a new problem. Due to the distance being too far, no matter how he tried, he could not reach the end of the rope. In desperation Hunter had to take out the selfie stick, then the length of the selfie stick was used to hang the backpack on the rope. Then it was another thrilling attempt. Hunter finished the jump again without any risk. 
Connor pulled the rope as hard as he could. Hunter is also desperately trying to get up. Just as she was about to climb the ladder, an accident happened. Hunter instantly fell down. Connor couldn't imagine climbing over to check and finding Hunter had grabbed the rope. Seeing Hunter unharmed, Connor's hanging heart was relieved. After a lot of hard work, Hunter was finally successful. Connor quickly took out a water bottle and poured out a few mouthfuls. Then he found a note in his bag and wrote down a distress message. Then clip on the drone and fly to the hotel they came from. It wasn't long before the drone began to show that it was running low on power. Connor quickly took control of the drone and would return. Fortunately, just as the power was running out, Connor grabbed the drone. Just as the two of them were in despair again, Connor overlooked the beacon at the tip of the tower. She immediately thought of a way to recharge the drone. Connor then began climbing the tower despite the pain in her leg. Connor finally reached the tip of the tower. He hurriedly unscrewed the light bulb, putting the drone's plug into the light socket. The drone was finally charged. However, just as it was about to be fully loaded, a vulture suddenly flew in with the smell of blood. The vulture flew towards Connor's wound. When the backpack fell, the vulture attacked again and Connor desperately tried to catch the drone. Connor couldn't get out of the way. He could only escape desperately. Fortunately, with his continued efforts, the drone was finally fully charged. Connor, who was about to run out of energy, climbed down. After returning to the tower, they immediately remotely controlled the drone again towards the hotel. Seeing that the drone was about to cross the road and reach its own place, both men were excited. But the next second, a truck came, and the sudden appearance of the truck directly destroyed the drone. The driver got out of the car and couldn't find the drone and the note on the ground. Then he drove away and his last hope was dashed. At night the sky suddenly shone with lightning and thunder. A storm is coming. That's when Connor suddenly saw Hunter's shoes. She was about to put her phone in her shoe and throw it down. But Hunter tells Connor, I'd love to give it to you, but I'm not on it anymore. At that moment, Connor realized Hunter hadn't grabbed the rope the previous fall. He died on the signal tower. Connor's extreme fear made her imagine herself. Understood everything and completely collapsed. Soon after, Connor seemed to lose consciousness. At that moment, a vulture suddenly flew over. Connor grabbed the vulture by the neck and threw it up. And Connor fought furiously. After some crazy outbursts, Connor killed the vulture alive. The vulture, ready to hunt, turned itself into food instead. After replenishing her strength, Connor stopped sitting around waiting to die. She attaches the rope to the last section of the ladder and begins to climb down. As he descended to the end of the rope, he immediately unlocked the latch and managed to jump to the beacon. Watch Hunter Connor's tragic death grieve, but now only her body can help. Just watch her edit the distress text message, put the phone in her shoe after. Then he pushed the shoe into Hunter's stomach and pushed Hunter under the tower. Under the protection of the corpse, the phone finally sent the message. The father who received the message immediately called for help. The time he arrived at the scene, Connor had already been rescued. The two men hugged each other and shed tears of excitement. Is it really worth losing your life for the thrill of it?